Despite being so close to the centre of Melbourne, for a long time Coot Island was not a name that was well known. But in 1991, that all changed when a series of explosions and fires caused plumes of toxic black smoke to billow out over the inner suburbs and the CBD. In today's video, we're going to look at this disaster and find out what happened. But first we have to go back in time to briefly look at this place and how it got its name. Before Melbourne was established in 1835, the area that we today call West Melbourne and Docklands was a large low-lying swamp. It was an important site for people of the Kulin Nation to meet other clans, find food and gather. After European settlement began, this area became a vital point for maritime trade and industry due to its proximity to the Yarra River and Port Phillip Bay. As part of works to make it easier for ships to navigate the river in 1886, the meandering route of the Yarra was straightened by cutting a new east-west canal through what was then called Sandridge Swamp. This new waterway was called Coode Canal, named after Sir John Coode, the engineer employed by the Melbourne Harbour Trust commissioners to design and complete the project. Because the original river alignment was kept in place, which became known as Fisherman's Bend, this created a new 97 hectare island, which was also named for John Coot, hence the name Coot Island. The island slowly became connected to the mainland over time, as the old course of the Yarra River and swamp were gradually filled in. It had a series of interesting uses in the early to mid 20th century, including a quarantine centre for returning servicemen suffering from bubonic plague after the First World War, a graveyard for abandoned ships, and an aircraft factory complete with an aerodrome. Despite it being no longer a separate piece of land, it continued to be called an island. After the Second World War in particular, more port and industrial facilities were built across the area, including Swanson Dock and Appleton Dock. In the 1960s, a series of bulk petrochemical storage facilities were built here. Over time this expanded, and more and more dangerous materials were stored here. But, as was later discovered, safety regulations were not being properly followed. Given the nature of the materials stored in close proximity to residential and commercial areas, emergency services had developed and practiced disaster response plans in case anything were to go wrong, which unfortunately it did. And this is what brings us to today's topic. At 2.10pm on the 21st of August 1991, a fire and series of explosions rocked the facility. It prompted an immediate response from over 150 firefighters, police officers and other emergency services personnel who quickly arrived and attempted to control the fire, primarily with foam. Despite their best efforts, a huge pall of toxic black smoke blew over Melbourne. Over 200 sailors stationed nearby were forced to abandon their ships and another 1,000 dock workers were evacuated. Fortunately, there was a strong wind that blew the smoke away from the nearest residential areas in Footscray and Seddon and towards the southeast. Nevertheless, there were lots of disruptions and evacuations caused by the disaster. Transport services were severely disrupted, as the Spencer Street rail yards were evacuated and V-line trains cancelled, and trams and buses throughout the west and central parts of Melbourne did not run for several hours. The Westgate Bridge, Dynan Road and Footscray Road were all closed as well. Nearby offices were evacuated, including the World Trade Centre in Northbank, and Footscray Primary School was closed. Emergency bulletins were issued over television and radio, advising officers to turn off air conditioning systems and for residents to stay indoors. Although the worst of the fire was extinguished relatively quickly, further explosions and flare-ups continued. The next day at 11.45am, further explosions caused more fires and damage to the facilities, and it took until 4pm to bring it back under control. Because the initial explosions damaged pipes and on-site firefighting facilities, this made it more difficult for firefighters to deal with. There was a shortage of specialist equipment and materials, to the point where the fire brigade had to borrow firefighting equipment and foam from Melbourne Airport. Other authorities were also called in to help, including the State Emergency Service, Country Fire Authority and the Royal Australian Air Force from their base at Laverton. Millions of litres of toxic chemicals in the storage tanks were destroyed. The concerns about the smoke in particular was because of the types that were stored there. The worst substances were acrylonitrile, which releases cyanide if burned at lower temperatures, and benzene, which is a carcinogen. Fortunately though, no dangerous levels of chemicals were found at ground level in sites across the city in the following days. 
Almost immediately, it transpired that in April of the same year, the state government had deferred a proposal to relocate the chemical storage only a few months prior in April 1991. There had been 54 chemical spills on Coot Island in the previous 10 years, and there had been two previous industrial chemical fires nearby in 1985 and 1988. As a result, many local residents and groups had campaigned for them to move or reduce industry's reliance on them. In the aftermath though, these plans gained a lot more momentum. As a result, the state government launched an investigation called the Coot Island Review Panel. In 1991 and 1992, it published four reports and papers, which found that the Coot Island facilities were well below international standards. It found nearly 400 breaches of regulations, a failure of government oversight, and that pure luck in the strength and direction of wind that day had prevented a public health catastrophe, if the smoke had instead landed on nearby residential areas or even the CBD. The section that grabbed the most media headlines though was the proposal to move the chemical storage to a different site at West Point Wilson in Geelong's Corio Bay. This attracted strong criticism almost immediately for several reasons. Amongst other things, this new location would be directly adjacent to Ramsar wetlands and other habitats of international significance. West Point Wilson is also a long way from factories where these chemicals are needed, forcing them to be transported overland. The panel incorrectly stated that this transport by road would be safer than by rail, and recommended that the Prince's Highway be widened to accommodate this truck traffic driving through many residential areas. As a result of these and other problems, this plan was abandoned in 1997 in favour of upgrades to the existing Coot Island facilities instead. Some changes were made over the next few years to consolidate and move some tanks further away from residential areas, and it remains today as the main chemical storage facility for Victoria. There have been significant safety improvements and redevelopment since the disaster, and there hasn't been any comparable incident from these tanks since. As for what caused the fire, a coronial inquest in 1994 concluded that a phenomenon called St Elmo's fire was the probable cause of the disaster. This happens when glowing plasma is generated around rod-like objects, and has been known to knock out telecommunication facilities for this reason. There had been a storm in Melbourne earlier in the day, and the coroner's report states that this St Elmo's fire phenomenon may have caused an explosion in vapour of the chemical tank that contained the acrylonitrile. However, this was not conclusively established, and other theories have also been proposed. These include a leak of a pipeline at ground level, or that the temperature of chemicals in one of the tanks overheated after not being monitored correctly. We may never know the long-term impacts or cause of this disaster for sure. One of the key findings of the investigation was that there was no system put in place to monitor potential health problems of those exposed to the fumes, which I assume would particularly include firefighters and other first responders to the site. The Coot Island fire left its mark in the minds of many Victorians, witnesses to the ominous toxic clouds billowing towards them. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more, please subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date on future videos. You can also visit my website at philipmalice.com. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.